Transportation Committee meeting to discuss the latest and greatest with Centro. We have Councilor Caldwell, Councilor Manto, Councilor Paniagua, President Hudson, Councilor Green, and Councilor Majuk here today. And we're honored to be also accompanied by our guest speakers, Brian Schultz with Centro. And I'm not gonna be able Mr. to say- Pintoff and Steve Cagle. Okay, Cagle, Steve Cagle. Uh, Brandeis from yep. Centro. And we have some SMTC gurus here as well. And we also have some friends from the MOVE um, group. So moving people, sorry, group. Thank you, Councilor Green. Um, so we're really happy to have you here, Barry. So hopefully we'll get a chance to be enlightened by you as well. Okay, so no further ado, we'll hand it over to Centro. Um, so how do you want to do this? So, a or you just want us to? Yeah, if you can give us a little overview of, I guess, the state of affairs with Centro. I know you just had a hiring um, we expo did. recently. So we've, um, uh, we've been challenged, as many employers have been, uh, with finding uh, employees, mm -hmm. uh, and most specifically for us, uh, bus operators and mechanics. Uh, we just had um, what we're calling a, an extremely successful open house. Uh, we had um, we did it a little different this time, so it was an open house. You could do your application process right there. And we also gave uh, potential bus operators the opportunity to actually drive a bus. So we have a vacant lot that's uh, across the street from our facility. Uh, they were able to get behind the wheel of a 40-foot bus, drive it around just to see what it's like. Cool. So that day alone, we had around 80 individuals come through. Um, that resulted in, we're still working on the final numbers, but we're hoping to be in the 22 to 24 uh, new potential bus operators in this next class that's starting in March, February, sorry. Um, so that was a great day. That was a great day. You know, we need that. Uh, we're currently down, you know, on any given day where, you know, we could hire 50 bus operators if they walked in tomorrow. So we're, you know, we've got some open positions, um, and that's just to get us back to full staffing. And then we're going to start, well, then also to um, put some of our new initiatives on the road, which we're going to talk about today as well, uh, including bus rapid transit. Uh, we, we've been needing more. So yeah, we've got a lot of things that we want to do. Uh, we need the manpower to do it. So the open house was a great start. Um, can I can I ask you something? Sure. Uh, so when people come to these open houses, I mean, do the people applying for these jobs do they do you offer training to operate these big big you know buses or or is that something they already need to come with the experience of or? No, many of the people that got on the bus that day had never driven anything that big. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, we have. Um, I mean, how do you park that? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was one of the reasons we did it. We did it in an open parking lot, so there, the chances of them hitting something were, were slim. Um, but we had qualified uh, bus operators, uh, people in their CDLs. Christopher was actually good enough to come in that day, and uh, he uh, uh, was on one of the buses, uh, as well as uh, Roger Thayer, who's one of our trainers. So there is training. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. So they give them a you know a quick 101 on on how to operate the bus. Um, you know, I mean, when you get down to it, it's got a gas pedal and a brake pedal. It's just big. Mm -hmm. Do they need CDL or specialized mm -hmm. licenses mm -hmm. for they that? They will once the, yes, so the, and that's the next step. So then we enter our those? training program, yeah. yeah. Some people come to us with CDLs. Um, they might have a CDL and they're lacking the passenger endorsement, which will help them get. Um, what we ask is that you take the uh, written uh, CDL permit test. Uh, and you know the process is much like getting a driver's license. You go down, you take your written permit test, you go out and you practice driving for a while with a qualified driver, and then you take your road test. The CDL is very similar to that. You take your written um, CDL permit test. We put you through a training program, uh, and then you uh, we prepare you for the uh, CDL road test. Total time from first person with no experience signing up to being able to drive the bus on their own? 10 weeks. Oh. If, if, you, if you come to us with no driving experience, now we did, uh, we were fortunate that we will have some people coming through that have their CDLs. Uh, that shortens the time frame a little bit. You know, we can knock you know, two to four weeks off of that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but you're still looking at a six to seven week process at a minimum. Is part of the training, I mean, aside from driving this big, you know, vehicle, <laughs> You know how to handle situations inside the bus if if ever there should, got you know forbid one. Yeah, you want to talk yeah, a little bit about that. A, amongst the ten week training course, it's not just getting the CDL, but it's learning all of the federal regulations that we must abide by, uh, ADA compliance issues. Uh, we do have training on um, you know de-escalation of, of incidents. Uh, and those are, a lot of those are refresher. They they're done every year, not just the one time, but we do refresher training as well. Oh, right. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big part of what we do with our operators, making sure that they feel comfortable behind the wheel and can handle any situation that may arise. Okay. Just with airbox operations, I mean, it's all manif being able to read a manifest, uh, it's all in part of that 10 weeks, yeah. Is this a pay training or? And one quick question, Brian, I'm gonna jump off of the training for a minute because I think I read, maybe I'm mistaken, I was dreaming. Um, we're gonna have express services Express services. Mm -hmm. oh, rapid transit. Bus rapid, rapid transit. transit you just express, but yeah. Yeah. So bus rapid transit is um, will will be new to the Syracuse area. Um, it, it's been implemented and successful in many cities uh, throughout the country. Um, and what it really does is it increases frequency, um, but it's along specific routes. So. Um, Syracuse Metropolitan Transportation Council did a smart one study back in 2017 uh, presented in 2018 and in that study was a, a BRT and it identified based on very specific data criteria that was pulled throughout the study uh, the best BRT routes in Syracuse and what it identified was uh, you know beginning in the Eastwood area coming down through downtown and then up to OCC, and then another leg that starts at the university area, goes down again through downtown and out to the Regional Transportation Center. So it really, if you look at the map, it kind of creates this X in the city. The frequency along that, you know, so instead of, uh, you know, depending on what route you're taking right now and being in 20, 30, 40 minute headways, we call them, or waiting times, we're hoping to reduce that down to the 12 to 15 minute mark. Um, so you really, I mean, if you're if you're along the BRT route and you miss a bus, no big deal. 10, 12 minutes later, another one's coming. And that's the whole idea of bus rapid transit. And that's, I mean, that's like the Reader's Digest explanation of BRT. The goal is to create as much frequency so individuals don't really need a bus schedule. They know they can just walk out to the stop and within a reasonable amount of time, there will be a bus along that, that corridor. By having the routes X through the city or through our hub, you'll be able to then have access to the entire system. And Do we fully? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I maybe I missed it and didn't read SMTC. But um, <laughs> let me ask you this though. So, because we have all of these different builds happening with Micron and all of those, are you looking at extending your routes to be able to? Yes, so, and I'll go back to the Amazon project. When that was first announced, and even before it was announced that it was Amazon, um, the developer, the engineer got us involved, um, uh, and quite honestly, through our, our partnership with uh, Center State CEO, uh, got us involved early on so that we could begin talking with the employer that was gonna operate, uh, occupy, excuse me, um, this large warehouse out on Morgan Road um, so that we could provide effective transportation and get people to work. I mean, that's what we do. Um, so again, um, you know, we are, the, Micron is in its very, very early stages, um, but we are hoping to be at the table. And, and again, uh, it, early on at the table so that we can provide effective service. So to effectively run all of these routes, uh, how many employees and drivers do you need mm -hmm. to be able to manage this? I mean, our full complement. Uh, including then, because there's the bus and then the rapid bus, you know, yeah. that come back to back. So and if we want to get back to 100% pre-pandemic service and BRT and, and every other initiative that we want to do, we're going to need 200 bus operators Two. at a minimum. What's your number now, Brian? 155-ish. Let's say changes every day so 200 total you said existing operation plus BRT 
So talk to us about how BRT is not going to replace your current routes and schedules. It's going to be in addition to because it's a more, as President said, express. Um, it's not going to stop at every stop like Correct. the others. So with 50 spots currently open, you've got 155 currently staffed. That's 200. So that 200 includes yep. the addition of BRT? Yeah, we'd be able to do a BRT with that. So industry-wide, are there less CDL drivers or are you losing them to competition? Um, I, I can't say that we're really losing them to competition. Um, if I had to give you my best guesstimate, we're losing them to alternative occupation or alternative employment opportunities that are out there. Um, you know, so... Um, I want to. I don't mind driving all day long, but I want the flexibility of picking and choosing when I drive. I can go work for DoorDash. I can go work for Uber, Lyft. Mm -hmm. Drive whenever I want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you you've got. Are they, uh, are, is it comparable what they earn? Uh, our pay. Well, I don't know what a, a, a full time Uber operator earns. Um, but there's no benefits. I mean, you know, so we, we offer a very competitive wage, uh, a phenomenal benefit package, health benefits, retirement. Um, so if you're looking for that traditional employer, um, we're, a, we're a great option. But the seniority is what takes place, right? Because the newer drivers are seniority based and they don't Working get a weekends. to get the, yeah. yeah. So when you say um, compatible rate, what ballpark what do you start off with um well our, our so when you hit top rate as a bus operator now where you're 20 2660 2660 so you're two dollars below that Six. for the first couple of years and it ramps up you know so once you're done training you're going to be in the 24 dollar range so start off as like 24. what do you need educationally to get that to get that uh, high school diploma or a GD, GED equivalent, clean driving record, uh, we're a drug-free work environment. Age, and, is there an age requirement? Well, kind of self or kind of superimposed on that there is because we ask for five years of driving experience. So if you first got your license at 16, then yes, 21 would be the, the earliest you could come in. So that's a requirement, not a suggested. Yeah, yeah, okay. we want at least five years of driving experience right now. And the record, does that matter if it's clean or if it's got issues or? Driving record has to be clean, background check, um, and uh, we do a pre-employment drug screen. Okay. So you talked to us about operators and numbers. What about fleet numbers for your current buses versus adding BRT to the plan? We'll let uh, Chris take that one. He's our fleet expert. Um, right now, with the fleet we have and the service we're providing, we we would be able to provide the BRT service. Um, okay. We're looking at um, alternative fuels as well, depending on how that'll work. Um, you know, battery electric bus, hydrogen fuel cell bus, um, yeah. researching the technology. Uh, but with the additional buses right now today, we should be able to provide that service. Um, but it. You know, we would require potentially uh, 16 more buses, mm. um, depending on revamp, you know, with manpower, getting back to full service, putting full service back out on the street would require us to add uh, potentially 16 more buses to the fleet um, to get to running both BRT and pre-pandemic 100% service. Do you need that 16 in the fleet in order to start it or can you roll BRT out in a phased but to use what we have now and pilot it? We'll go beyond it. BRT by its very nature is going to be rolled out in phases. Right. Um, so, um, you know, as Chris mentioned, because we are not at 100% of the service that we operated pre-pandemic, uh, we would be able to, if we could flip a switch tomorrow and have BRT out on the road, we would have enough fleet to do that. We probably would not have enough operators to do that. So. I apologize. We've done. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. So I know you talked about um, early on, and I've you know I've seen commercials and I've seen signs about recruitment. Have we? Have you ever reached out to like the school district or um, workforce development 
that partnership to try to bring in some newer young people and especially if you're um, paying for training to make sure we know let them know about these jobs that are opening yeah so you know central's in, a, in an interesting mm -hmm. um, area right now where you know we this having to advertise and recruit for bus operators is mm -hmm. new to us you know, and I'll go back. If you went, if you went back and looked five, six, seven, eight years ago, mm -hmm. um, if you were in a new operator class and you were one of fifteen people, you had to go part time, and then wait patiently, working part time shifts before a full time opportunity came up. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the nature of, of where we are, this class that's going to be graduating, they're all going to be offered full time opportunities if they want them. The benefits and all that. Benefits, yep. Yeah. Yes. What's yeah. the probation? I'm sorry? Probation period. Uh, six months. Yeah. So you would be willing to like join, collaborate with some of these programs to try to yes, educate and, and people? Yes, and we okay. have been doing that. So okay. that, again, you know, that's where we're, you know, we're nothing's I've told my, my team. Any idea you've got, bring it. We're doing social media we've never done before. Mm -hmm. We're doing television advertising, as you referenced, mm -hmm. radio advertising. Uh, we are working with community partners um, where the challenge comes in with work. You got to do TikTok. The... <laughs> <laughs> That's where you mess it up. You really want me to show my TikTok account? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the challenge where we run into with working with like the Syracuse City School District, um, you know, you're, when you're getting somebody graduating high school, mm -hmm. they're probably, they won't have that five years of experience that we need. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we are doing also, we met with um, the new president of OCC a few weeks back mm -hmm. and talked to him about doing a partnership mentoring program. Mm -hmm. He wants to bring in or enhance their um, like auto mechanics style or auto mechanics type course offering. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a full service garage. It'd be a great partnership to have a mentoring program where you know they go through the coursework <laughs> at OCC and then they come down and work hands on side by side with a skilled tradesman. Um, and so yes, we're looking at everything. How many how many people do you, you usually graduate from A class? Like the one you have now? And again that's you know there there's no more usual. Uh, we used to strive for fifteen to twenty, twenty two per class. Uh, this last class prior to this one had seven. Mm -hmm. You know, so that barely helps us keep up with nutrition. So, so, Brian, I got two questions. Which is why we're very optimistic about this class that's starting right now. I have two questions for you. So, you, you said earlier <coughs> that through, um, through uh, recruitment, you probably got about maybe about 60, right? And at the end of it, you probably end up with 24, possibly. Mm -hmm. What do you see beside the background check? And the background check. What do you see is the biggest, you know, issue that forces you to lose? Okay, so if 80 people came through, uh, not all 80 of them wanted to be bus operators. We also had uh, uh, advertised for um, what we call a service or cleaner <coughs> position. So these are the individuals that service the buses when they come in at night, clean them, and get them ready for the next day. Uh, we also had some people come for open uh, mechanic positions that we had. And then because of the way we did this open house and we actually had people driving the bus, that's a daunting task. Uh, you know, this isn't, uh, you're not getting behind the wheel of a, a, an SUV. I mean, this is a big vehicle. And one of the reasons we did that was we would rather have you sit behind the wheel right then and say, you know what, this really isn't for me, rather than having us go through the time and expense of getting you two, three, four weeks into this, putting you behind the wheel and then saying, okay, this isn't for me. Because even the service or cleaner positions, you gotta be able to operate a vehicle. Mechanics, you have to be able to operate a vehicle. Those are those are all CDL positions. I guess, I guess with that, um, what's, what's an anticipated date of the art? Do you have like a wish anticipated and put, you know, uh, what, can we what turn all the, the microphones off? Like? <laughs> <laughs> um, ideally, if we could have BRT up and running 26, that'd be great. 2026. 
and the reality is probably later? Hmm. No, that's actually a realistic date. Oh. Uh, the pie in the sky would be sometime in 2025. So, right, are there any further like funding gaps or anything else that are hurdles getting us to that point from BRT? Uh, right now it's implementation so it's it's going through the steps we've identified the capital um, I don't know if everyone saw in the news uh, uh, Senator Schumer um, through this latest uh, omnibus bill was able to get us um, three million dollars that we're going to be using towards BRT uh, we have other capital dollars that we've set aside so capital wise we're able to get there um, and as we continue to go down the path, it's just the hiring operators, hiring operators, hiring operators. So that when we're ready to go, we will have the, the people that we need. And would you anticipate from a rollout perspective, you do like one of the lines of the X first and then implement the next one? And how would you anticipate doing that? That would quite possibly be the way that it's gonna go, yeah. Yeah, I would probably envision to see the uh, Eastwood to OCC run um, being the first leg and then the um, SU out to the RTC, the second one. And then let's Again, say, based on ridership. Let's say this is successful, and, and I think we can all, success looks different different ways. I mean, one is ridership numbers and that part of it, but another is, you know, are the neighborhoods seeing more development? Are they, you know, are people getting more job opportunities? Um, let's say this does work. What do you look at future lines in the future, or what would kind of be the next step if everything goes well? We certainly could. Um, you know, if you're familiar with CDTA, our, our counterpart in Albany, you know, that's how they did it. You know, they built out a, um, a BRT line and then they've added a second one and a third one. Um, and that's really how BRT operates in its truest form is, you know, you get it up and running and if it's successful, you keep doing it. And is the idea, would BRT be branded differently or would it still be regular central buses? How would you handle that? Uh, yeah, same buses uh, branded differently though, yes. Different shelters, uh, different buses that would have a different look to it. They would all come out of this cent the transportation center, mm -hmm. Salina. Yep. Brian, how do you determine where to put a route? Because I, I'm thinking you, you pick it up from Eastwood. I, you know, when I look at Eastwood and I look at Northside, possible. There's a probably, and this is a guy that is not looking at data, right? <clears throat> there's possibility that at Northside. There might be more bus riders than they are coming out of Eastwood. Just you know, so how, how do you determine that from Eastwood to OCC and not from Northside to OCC? I can jump in. It's okay. Sure. So, <laughs> so the it's SM all very data. The yeah. SMTC yeah. report that they did. I mean, looked at a series of six routes, I believe, or that were identified, and ultimately found these two to be the most uh, promising to start with. But to that, to what our conversation was, there were other ones, you know, that come from West and C Street across um, that potentially could be second to, you know, if these work, those are the next most viable ones after that and so on and so forth. And I will point out too, the north side is included. I mean, one of the lines goes right down North Salina Street. So particularly, um, you know, the communities that live within a 10 minute walk in North Salina Street would see really, really great service. That could be downtown in four minutes. As you spoke, one of the great things about the BRT is that it, you know, if you're within walking distance of that BRT, then you have really frequent bus service that you can rely on. Um, and it, it's really more than just the streets, obviously. It's the communities that surround those streets. Um, and it gives individuals freedoms uh, of that not being held to a schedule that we currently have of getting to where they need to go exactly when they want to be there. So when you say so BRT is a direct line, you know, so the bus that's going down James Street right now, I might deviate off of a side street, hits Sunnycrest and it loops around and it goes back down to James Street, hits another side street. BRT <coughs> doesn't do that. BRT runs down James Street. And if you want to utilize that faster, more frequent service, you're going to walk two or three blocks to get to it. But you're, it's very predictable. No, so no, I'll be quiet. <laughs> never want you to be quiet, Councillor. So there are local organizations here, big one. You assume like ASU, you look at Loretto, you look at St. Joseph Hospital, you know. Have there, has there been any buy-in from them? Because when you put something like that in, I would assume it would be attract, attractive to them for to, to attract people on bus line who want to work in those places. Has there been any buying buying from them to have investment or, or help you out in some way? Or has there been any other uh, that conversation at all? 
those conversations with those organizations have been had over the years since the Smart One study is concluded. Um, I, and I think that once the service is up and running, the buy-in is that their customers and their employees are going to use the service. Um, that's how it's worked in Albany. And what they, they don't see it now? Pardon me? They don't, force, they don't envision it? Well, I think it they'll use it. it um, and, uh, you know, asking for a financial investment and getting a financial investment, I think, is different. Um, they certainly see the value in having express service for their employees. Um, that's one of the reasons why the, the uh, Eastwood South Ave uh, corridor is chosen. There's a destination OCC, Syracuse University is a destination on the on the other corridor, so it makes sense. And the hospitals, it's a very densely, you know, a huge uh, employment center. Uh, so those individuals are going to use it. Uh, in Albany, that's how they, they have uh, several universities along their corridors. And what they do is they provide transportation for their employees and they subsidize their transportation for their employees through you find passes within the transit system. Yeah, I tell you, when I was in Albany, those, those, it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. It, it moves. It, like, Do you have all the vehicles? You need a car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the students ride for free. Right. right. And, the, and, the, and the university pays for that and that's how they subsidize it. And that's why it was so world. great for me because I was a student up there. We <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Do you have all the vehicles you need to be able to provide this service? As of today, yes. Considering that we are not at 100% of our pre-pandemic service. Mm -hmm. So if tomorrow we had all of the service back on the road that we had the end of 2019, then tried to do BRT, no, we would need extra vehicles. 16, you said? And come 2023, you know, to be able to utilize your services, is there going to be an increase of how much that costs to the people? We actually just did a fair decrease, believe it or not. Oh. Yeah, we went from two dollars down to a dollar. Mm -hmm. Used to be thirty-five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what that. First in our boat. We're not supposed to tell people that. <laughs> So it's going to be a dollar. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a dollar to get on a central bus now. What we did is we... And, rapid, and, and the rapid... Uh, that's going to be six dollars. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, a dollar. Same thing. Dollar, 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 all okay. over. Yeah. So I asked you the shelter question last week. I think you sent me a list of all the shelters, like 72 you have currently. Are you just going to reallocate some of those, like perhaps paint them red and call it a BRT? Or what's that no, plan? No, no. God, yes, yes, no, the, the BRT shelters will be specific, they will be different, they will be larger likely, they will have more amenities, certainly they probably will have uh, a seating element, potentially real-time arrival information, maybe um, <coughs> probably at that point QR codes so people can get on their smartphone and get by their ticket right there to use mobile ticketing for the BRT. Mm -hmm. So they will be different branded different look different a little larger we hopefully will need larger shelters for those stops because there's going to be so few of them along the road the, the line that you'll need larger ones and the ones that we have will relocate um and we might you know Eliminate. i think citing the stations is going to be a significant part of the process of where these will go we would like them traditionally our current shelters not even too deep in the weeds but they are right where the light is we want to be on the other side of the light so we get through the red light or the green light. We don't go through the red light. We get through the green light and we want to be past the intersection where there'd be a far side shelter and then we bus rapid transit moves quicker that way. Great, love it. So I think at this point, it might be a good idea to hear from our friends, the moving people, just to give us a quick insert, everything we've talked about so far and the work you've done, because I understand you really engage well with the community and get feedback. So. Just a quick comment. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Barry Lentz. I'm a resident of Syracuse, reside at 1011 Westcott Street, and I'm speaking to you today as a representative of Moving People Transportation Coalition. Uh, I don't want to cover any of the ground that Brian or, or Steve covered or that might come in a question and answer, but I just want to take this opportunity. I mean, thank, first of all, thank the committee for holding uh, this meeting to consider bus rapid trans transportation and related issues. Moving People was formed back in the early stages of the I-81 scoping process in the fall of 2013. Uh, we were formed as a work group of uh, Alliance of Communities Transforming Syracuse with a focus on applying social justice and environmental justice principles to the I-81 opportunities uh, 
process. And from the beginning, as our uh, name suggests, we felt that it is critical to have a focus in this process on moving people and not cars. And that included, in our view, a, a comprehensive a regional mass transit system that included bus rapid transit as an important component of that. Back in the spring of 2014 and again in 2015, we held forums uh, on uh, bringing BRT to Syracuse and educating the public about it. One of those forums we had representatives from the Albany system, uh, which uh, Councillor has mentioned is a very successful system, a good model for what we hope to be able to achieve uh, in, in Syracuse. Since then, we have continued to uh, work to educate the public about mass transit and public uh, uh, BRT. Uh, and since the ROD, we have been able to shift our focus a bit, although we still there's plenty of work to be done to implement the best community grid possible, but we have shifted our focus more towards public transportation. And we have regularly over the years worked with Centro and worked with SNTC to lobby annually uh, in Albany for the uh, budget request of Centro and the New York Public Transportation Association. We will continue to do so. Uh, we do feel, and we're very, very encouraged by developments, obviously the commitment from Centro to begin moving towards implementing a BRT system uh, is uh, something we are enthusiastic about. Uh, 2026 is great. Uh, three years ago, it would have been better, but <laughs> we understand the reality of the, of the situation. We're also very, very encouraged by the exploring uh, trans, tra uh, transportation uh, tomorrow's process has been unfolded just recently. Uh, give a shout out to SMTC for their work on that. There is a, a web page that's up on the SMT website that provides a good overview of the uh, upcoming uh, exploring uh, tomorrow's transit process. And I guess one of the things you know we're here today to encourage the counselor to continue to be proactive in the public transportation process and supporting the uh, ETT process. And we're happy and eager to engage with the committee in doing anything that we possibly can to help you uh, be proactive in this and to encourage widespread community participation in the ETT process. We, I know the council is primarily a legislative and oversight body, but we do believe that there is a proactive role that the council can can play in moving uh, our system forward, developing better mass transit systems, and bringing BRT to Syracuse in, in uh, uh, an effective and timely uh, timely manner. So again, I want to thank you for doing this. I think there's lots of opportunity to do a lot more. We're eager to work with the committee and other counselors. I know Councilor Green has been involved this, in this for, for, for quite a while and trying to promote a BRT and so forth. So uh, that's all Sally Force together and do everything that we can to work together to make this, uh, to make this happen. Excellent. Thank you. So as far as the money goes, the funding that's coming in, what, 22 million? Is it total to date? How much? Total BRT is going to run us right around 35 million. Total. Is it all in? Do you have all of no. it allocated? OK. Yeah, we've, uh, we've identified all of that. OK. Is there a limit on that funding, like must be spent by or? <clears throat> Uh, I won't say it's uh, um, no limit, but yes, you know, it's, it's all grant funded, so we have mm -hmm. to um, allocate in our capital plan or our TIP, and we have to draw that down. Okay. Yeah. So how many years would that give you operationally before you, can, before you run out? But those are just capital dollars, so the $35 million is just for the capital, for the infrastructure cost to implement BRT. Um, you know, starting off with engineering and uh, consultant costs, and then you're talking the build out, purchasing buses. Um, beyond that is the operational dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so then, operationally, you know, you're looking in the you know four million dollars a year range at a minimum to operate this service. And you, you think that BRT is able will be able to maintain itself in terms of? revenues and all of that? Uh, no, the fare box will never um, support all of the costs to operate um, public transportation, um, which is why, I mean, we're heavily, we rely heavily on state funding. Uh, nearly half of our current operating budget comes from um, state operating assistance. Uh, so it's, you know, working with our state partners. Uh, Bill Magnarelli has been a a huge supporter, Senator May, a uh, huge supporter of BRT. 
um, and uh, you know, with the with the support of um, the assemblyman and the senator and their counterparts, uh, we're going to be able to um, continue on funding uh, public transit. I read recently bike and scooter sharing and the on-demand ride. Does that involve BRT, or is that your current operation you're considering that? Uh, those are all separate initiatives. Um, so we uh, just recently signed a contract, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to start offering bike and scooter services. Um, and it's actually with the same vendor the city uses. Okay. Uh, so it's expanding it out through the county and the areas that we serve. Uh, we're currently uh, meeting with um, our partners in you know, local towns and villages to talk to them about where corrals could be placed. Um, uh, OCC is very excited about having a uh, bike and scooter on their campus. So that will, that will definitely be a, a, one of our bike and scooter hubs up there. So you're facilitating that relationship with VO and yep. these organizations? Expand it beyond the, like beyond the city limits right now, where the, which the city operates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, was that part of your work, Neil? Did you work with Centro to bring those? <laughs> Sorry, our illustrious transportation planner who's got lots of knowledge. Neil Burke, DPW. So yes, we're coordinating with Centro's efforts. We clearly contract with VIO. It's a very popular service. I'm sure you've all seen and heard about the scooters that are everywhere. Um, very so popular nice. service. Um, unfortunately, uh, our contract with VIO is just for the city. So when you want to ride this up James Street and you hit uh, <clears throat> Thompson Road, the scooter turns off. And you'll see a lot of them piled right there because folks want to get to Wegmans just a couple blocks down. What this will do will to allow for additional areas of the network to function and allow people to come and go. It won't be a, I don't, I don't believe it'll be a full countywide system out into the middle of nowhere, but incorporating those town centers, villages, things like that, and we're happy to work with Centro on that, as well as a provider to make sure that there's more scooters, more bikes, and everything else that we need. So do you wear your city hat when you're working with this, or do you wear your Centro board hat when you're uh, working? Because I'm trying to figure depends. out which meal I'm talking to right now. It, it if, if they're they listening to me. Made for them, they're <laughs> yeah. right down the middle. Is it like a conductor yeah. hat? If I like what they're saying, I'm working for the city. If I don't, I'm a board member. Okay, I get it. OK. Good, glad to see that that's all coordinated and expanding and Thompson Road won't be the collection of uh, scooters anymore. Um, so as far as the on-demand rides go, can you expand upon? So uh, on-demand service is uh, a type of service that's been very popular in other communities. It essentially is uh, a, a smaller vehicle that will go off-route and may uh, uh, be a, a stationed in, a, in, a, in a, a portion of your community where you can ride anywhere from one part of the community to another part of the community through uh, an app. It's app-based or by a phone phone call. Either call or, or pull it up on your app and you request the bus and it will be there in 15 to 20 minutes. Take you where you need to go. How um, big is the bus? It will probably be a eight passenger, eight to eight yeah. passenger vehicle. Okay. We don't anticipate ever needing anything larger than that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be able to maneuver in smaller areas and be a 40 foot bus. You can only get down so many streets. So this would give individuals who are in that community some flexibility of going to some locations that perhaps the current fixed route bus service doesn't go to. Okay. So uh, we're finding that in some communities it's preferred over fixed route service. It's more flexible. It's really, really popular. And once you establish it, it does grow quickly. So we're looking at, uh, testing this out in a, in a community in the not distant, distant future. If it works, we can then figure out where else this may be a solution to better bus service. Then maybe it replaces a fixed route because it's not being used in that community because there's not a lot of density. So Do you have fleet to support that eight passenger? <clears throat> we will have to get fleet for that. Purchase it. Yeah. yeah. But that's easier. Well, I wouldn't say easier, but there's it's I think I think our target would be to start out with similar to what our paratransit fleet is a cutaway vehicle. It provides both uh, ADA capabilities as well as a regular, you know, a passenger that doesn't require a mobility device. Um, so right now we do have a, a, a few extra vehicles depending on where we go, but um, you know we do have the opportunity that's uh, where we can purchase those buses on state contract. Um, so 
you can do that from the manufacturer right here in New York State. And those rides won't be a dollar, I assume? We don't know that yet. Oh. We don't, we don't know that yet. I'm not going to, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, one more question. Back to your X with the BRT. Um, what's the current, I looked it up and I didn't find any, but maybe you do have one, current route to the airport, any? No. Is there a reason for that? Nobody uses it. Nobody uses it. How about the employees that work there? Well, you know, we had it years and years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and I'll give you my, my own personal example of last year um, so if you're that business traveler you're taking a round trip flight the same day you're heading out to wherever you got your business meeting and you're coming back it might be a, a, an option for you you know you can hop on the central bus get yourself to the airport you get back take another bus to wherever you're coming back to um, now envision that um, so last year the family who heads to Disney um, you got four or five people traveling, each with two bags. Are you doing that on the central bus? Probably not. You know, especially when you consider that wherever you're coming from, you're, you're getting on in your neighborhood, getting down to the hub, taking all your luggage off the central bus, transferring and getting onto another bus mm -hmm. to get out to the airport because it would be virtually impossible for us to run a bus from every community, every town, or village directly to the airport we just i mean we don't have the the manpower we don't have the demand we don't have the um the buses anything um you know and then again when you're talking about the airport employee um a vast majority of them not a majority many of them work very very early so again we wouldn't be able to get you out to the airport and many of them work very very late so you wouldn't be able to get home. So if we can get you out there, you might not be able to get the return trip. And, or if we're getting you out there in the morning, you know, the, it, it just doesn't line up. You know, we've done it. Um, and again, if, you know, if we're gonna be using our, our limited resources, we're gonna be putting it into uh, BRT, on demand, you know, things of that nature where we can really get the most bang for our buck. Seems like on demand would be a good solution for that, for sure, at least for the Absolutely. families that want to travel and Absolutely could be. Yep. get there. Absolutely. Any of my other colleagues have any questions? Okay. Counselor? SMTC, do you have anything to share? You guys are the other sure. wizards. You have somebody to Do you mind stepping up? Sorry. I don't know if I can Our local celebrity here. Sorry. Come on over. <laughs> Jim D'Augustino, SMTC. In terms of infrastructure related to BRT and it goes to the city, one thing they didn't talk about was um, traffic transit signal preemption, um, one of Neil's favorite topics. That's actually, you know, you have to modify the signals you have with some hardware and some software so that the <coughs> priority is given to the bus rapid transit so that they hold to the green, things like that. That makes it rapid because you want it to be able to access the system more efficiently than a car, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just, there's more than just buying a bus. There's a whole bunch of things that has to work with Central is working with the city on that. That's what all this money goes for, and that's why it takes, I know it's like 2026, why so long? This is, there's things you have to do. It's more than just buying a bus and going out and driving it. There's a lot of things that have to go into doing it. That's just one thing that wasn't talked about today that's specific to the city and your infrastructure that has to be worked on with Central in order to make that operate. Because right now, the only people who have traffic transit signal preemption, I think, is the fire department in the city right now. So that has to be expanded. That has to be upgrades to make that happen, that kind of thing. Awesome. And I will say too, um, um, speaking of the, the signal prioritization, um, you can't do BRT without it. Mm -hmm. And Mayor Walsh has been a, a, a huge proponent of BRT. And, um, and it was, you know, him coming to the table and, and, and bringing the city along with uh, allowing us access to signal prioritization that took uh, took BRT off the off the back burner and put it on the front burner. It really did. And for the record, I just liked it when anything we study actually makes it into reality. Yeah, right? we, have, we have bookshelves of studies Their we've done that go nowhere. So to actually have studied something that will end up on the road even in 2026 is just yeah. makes us happy. So we're glad. Your well, reports it. are so dreamy. I wish they could really come to fruition <laughs> more than they do. Um, it, allow me if you will uh, to expand on the signal prioritization aspect so we do have a 
project proposed and moving forward now to spend ARPA dollars to upgrade what's called our Opticom system and that's what allows the fire department to preempt signals. So if it's red and the fire department's coming they have a switch that they can hit to turn that light green so they can get to wherever they need to go as fast as possible. It's only for emergency situations right now. It's a very old system that we have. We have old stuff in the cabinets as well but we are looking at modernizing this system and spending those ARPA dollars to do so. While that is mainly focused on the fire department, there are other possibilities with the new systems that allow you to, say, bring on bus rapid transit or other items like that that allow buses that same functionality, but they would never be able to, say, preempt ahead of a uh, fire apparatus. So there are different levels of service there, but Centro is something that we're absolutely looking to incorporate uh, where applicable. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to turn a, a red light green, but if we are approaching a stale green that's about to go red, mm -hmm. it would hold okay. it just for that extra second or two to allow us through the intersection. And as Steve mentioned, so now our bus shelter is on the far side rather than the near side. Awesome. So we get through the intersection, and now you're at the BRT shelter, and then just that one or two extra seconds is, is going to make the difference in making transit rapid transit and being able to go does down artificial street. intelligence determine that or does the driver literally have to push the button um there's there's a little bit of both so there, it is more of an automated system compared to what we have now which is a good thing um <laughs> but on top of that you know the city has the ability to make other investments that make transit work so you heard brian talk earlier about the trade-off for increased frequency may mean that your the bus stop is two blocks away instead of one and so what we can do on the city side is we do have the municipal sidewalk program and we would program those dollars and those investments to correspond with where the BRT stations are going to be. That would help our planning process significantly and we want to push people towards transit, right? That is part of the goal. We say walkable, we say sidewalks, but that goes hand in hand with transit. Those things are, are very much interlinked. So again, we're working closely with Centro on the city side to make sure that our infrastructure investments are setting the stage for BRT and also for a host of other things that we want to happen as well. Awesome. Will there be scooter racks on the bus to put your VO on? Take it with you so when you so get off, our you got it? Currently have I defer to racks. the experts. <laughs> um, our buses have bike racks, right. um, but the current bike racks, the groove isn't wide enough to hold a scooter tire or even the, uh, the bike because it's a thicker tire on those bikes and these are really made for like your 10 speeds or your, even your mountain bikes that have the, the narrower tire. I hear Madonna's song get into the groove <laughs> playing in my head all it, of a sudden. It, it, just that, to elaborate on that, the, the target or the goal would be to connect where you could ride the scooter right to there. a transit center, the <clears throat> BRT center, leave the scooter, get on the bus and then when you get off there's another scooter crew. Right. So you know by expanding this to uh, the loop the lake, you know we have the orange lot uh, service in the summer that we, that connects you up there. You know, it would be a great opportunity for a corral. Mm -hmm. So you could take it on you know, James Street, get on a BRT route, go to the hub, mm -hmm. then take the Baldwinsville bus, and then when it stops in that area, you can then Scooters. use the, pick up a scooter on that end, because you pay for the minute. So, you know, you if well, we can connect- pause if it's on the bus. I'm sure I'm riding the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So in that case, but it, it, it would allow you to connect and get off one scooter and get on another one or a bike on the other end would be a target to be able to, to connect that way for you. Love it. And again, you know, that speaks to the, um, the time frame of all of this. And that's why we are talking, you know, 25, 26, because when you're trying to coordinate all of this and really change transit in central New York and in Syracuse, mm -hmm. um, you know, by implementing bike and scooter and on demand and utilizing all of these different um, types of transportation to get to a BRT line. You know, it's, it's a coordinated effort. That's why, it, you know, it just can't happen tomorrow. Right. It's it, exciting. And just from the fleet side, it's 18 months from the day you place an order for a bus. Uh -huh. um, of course, we know supply chain issues are, are hindering some manufacturing today. Sure. But, you know, in best case scenario, from the date we place an order with a manufacturer, it's 18 months until we see delivery here in Syracuse. And um, your current fleet is aging as well. Correct. So, so in the, you put that in the... To speak to what Chris is saying, so we approved at our last meeting a bus purchase that's going to be delivered in the fall of 24. September 24. For mm -hmm. 80... We hope. Yeah, 82 bus. Hope. The target is 82 buses in September 24. Um, wow. But, and that's if all goes well. The, we did have some buses be delivered 
um, last spring, summer, mm -hmm. um, to the point that they were actually mid through manufacturing and then they had to take them offline because some of the materials and supplies weren't in okay. here. So we're hopeful September 24, we'll see that delivered. Okay, great. Bob, did you have a question about BRT? Thank you. If I can speak for two seconds. Sure. And it is about BRT. Okay, great. Thank you. My name is Robert Haley. I live uh, in the university area, have lived in the city for 50 years. I'm an architect and planner, and I've been involved for years um, with these issues <laughs> and in support of SMTC, many projects, all of the DOTs, I-81, and so on. My point here is to support Centro and the BRT concept as a new effort for our city and to go to some simple concepts, not, not the details, which is the hard everyday task, and I appreciate all that. Um, the concept of transit for everyone in a city like this is essential to a quality of life. We've had studies in the city for years, as you've mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, and where's Jim, there he is. <laughs> and essentially it comes down to being very proactive about these opportunities. This is a big opportunity. BRT is a transformation for Centro. We need that. Centro needs that. Our community needs that. It's been burdened by past conditions. Uh, some, well, it's simply been burdened by past conditions. We want to get past that. You mentioned that, uh, Commissioner, when you said new branding. And the opportunity to have quicker service, number one. Mm -hmm. Quicker service, number one, number one, number one. 15 to 20 minutes is a choice people want to make that will take the rides. BRT can do that. Um, to, and I'll, I will skip quickly right and left on a couple of issues. The airport issue, he, he said it right, nobody wants to ride it. No, you know, nobody rides it is what you said, Commissioner, I appreciate that. That's because it didn't work for them. BRT gives us an opportunity to switch bus routes as we need through time by planning and opportunities. When the gondola idea came uh, for the fairgrounds, and we had all sorts of money and everybody wanted a gondola because we ski and we like gondolas uh, and they're all over Europe and big cities with huge populations. That money could have been used to do a BRT to the to fairgrounds. What was the purpose? A flexible bus system that can be targeted towards population needs. BRT can do that at a slower pace than just a, a state fair opportunity but with where we are today, needing planning, strategic, clever planning for cities transit, this is the time. It's also time to mention to the council, it would be great to have a resolution supporting BRT from the council in terms of purpose and to coordinate it with the city and county transportation efforts in terms of planning for this new era, thanks to the era we're in, which is the new planning possibilities because of Micron and because of our future. Syracuse has always been, by the way, in the center of the Northeast. It hasn't moved. <laughs> and it's finally coming to the point where everybody is now seeing it and where it is. <clears throat> this is happening at our city in a different way. City-county planning is at a new point to combine city planning, county transit concepts towards population centers and development. Transit, TOD is the, another skip for me. Sorry, I slide. Uh, another one is transit-oriented development. And that works with, as you know, all across the world, you build it first and they will come and that's a development. We've, it's been all over London and all over all, all cities. This is an opportunity to combine transit concepts with development centers, whether they're existing, like Fayetteville and Ballinsville and others, or new ones proposed. And, and that's the long-term view of where we are now. So thank you for this hearing and thank you for the support for BRT concepts. Appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. Thanks, for thank you. Okay, so one last question. It's not about BRT, actually. It's about safety in our schools. Um, uh, Council Paniagua ran an educational program with students that come through City Hall, and one of their projects was actually based on safety and, and busing. So can you speak to, like, do you have a scorecard, like a safety scorecard, or has there been any improvements, or do you see issues with safety with busing? Um. I don't really think the, the safety issue is with traditional busing. Not like car buses getting in accidents, I mean, you know, yeah, more no, being um, You know, so we do work closely with the Syracuse City School District mm -hmm. um, to make sure that, um, you know, the students that are riding, we, we you know, they're, we're a, a contract, we have a contract relationship with the City School District uh, where we bus the high school age students. Um, we have worked with them over the years and we've actually uh, instituted a few years back uh, what we call um, direct busing 
Um, so if you're getting on your bus at the high school, it's taking you directly to the neighborhood now rather than going through the transit hub. Mm -hmm. uh, the unfortunate part about that is that you can still get on your bus at your high school and go through the transit hub. Oh. So, um, you know, we, we can't force people to take any given mode of transportation or any specific route. Um, but what we have done um, is we do now have um, from one to seven every day, every weekday, uh, in addition to our own um, hired security, we have Syracuse Police Department on site at the hub. And then we also just started uh, implementing bus monitors. So any of the buses that service the high schools, uh, we started hiring and we will now be placing bus monitors on that morning and afternoon trip. Oh wow. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, safety is important to us. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, not just for the kids that are riding, but for all of our passengers. Do the monitors check the bus passes and make sure everybody who's supposed to be on the bus is on the bus? Like, how does that work? Uh, that's not their job. Um, you know, so if you're riding a, a city school bus and you get on with a, a bus pass, mm -hmm. um, the bus pass is going to be the bus pass. Okay. Uh, it's the monitor's job, hopefully, by having that monitor presence on the bus. Um, if you were thinking of starting some trouble, you might think twice. Got it. You know, is that uh, always going to be the case? No, but any step that we can take to help, um, you know, make the bus uh, passengers feel safer, to make the trip safer, we're going to do it. And you said on site security at the hub. So you have SPD there, like stationary, or they do patrol checks? From one to seven every day, Monday through on Friday. Site. They're yeah. on property. Always. They're on property. Two police officers, two uniformed police officers. Is that new? How, how long has that no, been we've in place? Been doing that for a while. Yeah. I think yeah. we've, had, we've had police officers at the hub for many, many years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we have that. our own supervisors down there um, mm -hmm. all day long. And we work closely with the city school district as well on, yeah. on those issues. So if something comes up, we are in constant communication to make some maybe adjustments. They send personnel down to diffuse issues. So there's a, there's a process that's in place always to kind of handle situations as they arise it's been a great partnership with yep. the city with the school yeah. district i was a center bus rider when i went to high school so me too glad to see it <laughs> <laughs> but now you guys have wi-fi we didn't even have internet back then but technology you didn't have cell phones back then i'm just going to say technology's changed you didn't have cell phones back right. then Okay, well, I think that concludes our meeting. You've shared a lot of really good information. I know as a counselor, hearing from Neil and hearing about the signaling and SMTC, it just helps put everything in perspective and makes the voting a lot and easier and clearer. Back, uh, give a call. Oh, that we, we can share. We know your number, Brian. That's right. <laughs> I, know. I know. And thank you all. And thank yeah, you, thank SMTC, you. and everyone who came today. Thank you. Good one. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. so nice.